Hi there, my name's Ian, I'm a PhD student at Sheffield Hallam University and this is the second in a brief series of videos I'm producing on how Microsoft Word can help those of us who are producing uh, extended pieces of writing like theses and dissertations. In the first episode we took a look at how we can navigate through the document of often several hundred pages using the views feature. There are different ways that you can view the document so we can navigate through it using those. In this episode I want to look at the document itself and the ways that it needs to be set up to comply with the regulations that we're often obliged to follow as part of the examinations process. Um, if you forgive the rather crude title page as I mentioned in the previous video um, I'm trying to do this in a single take rather than uh, do a lot of video editing and post-production afterwards. So uh, we'll get started and we'll see how we get on. The first thing I want to do is just to show the navigation pane. That's something we looked at briefly in the last uh, episode. These are all the different chapter headings within uh, my thesis. That needs setting up and we'll look at how that's done in a pre uh, in a following episode but that will allow me to just jump through the thesis in different ways because we're going to look at different parts of it here. One of the things you will notice is that there are very few, there are no page numbers put in yet. I haven't done that yet so we'll also look at how that uh, that process needs to be undertaken because there are one or two slight subtleties particularly uh, appropriate within the thesis or dissertation. So we're currently on the view tab, let's just go to the home tab and we'll go back to the start of the document, back to the abstract. Right, so the first thing is setting up the document itself. You're probably familiar that the page layout tab is where that can be done. So you can change the margins within here. You may find that one of these default settings might be useful to you, but Often the university specifies precisely how wide the margins need to be. So you may need to go to custom settings. Um, and within here, we can change the top, bottom, left and right margin sizes according to the regulations that we need to follow. So that can be done in here. We can also change to landscape within here too. You can do that within orientation. Um, we can also, not appropriate for the thesis, but if you're doing a magazine article or a newsletter or producing something for a different kind of publication, then you might need to change the page settings within there. But what you probably will need to do is to consider what goes on in this little section. So any changes we make to the document can either be applied across the board globally or they can be applied from this point forward. So, for example, when you get to your appendices at the end, they might need laying out differently than the earlier sections. So, if that's the case, then that can be done in here and make any changes to from this point forward. So, just get your cursor at the start of your appendices and then apply any changes that you need to from there onwards. So, we'll just cancel out of that for the moment. Oh, one other thing within there that might be useful, when you come to the point of printing, I'm not there yet, so it's not on my mind at the moment, is you may need to add a gutter. And what that does is add an extra little bit down the left-hand margin so that the text doesn't get, get obscured by any of the binding process. You'll notice there's a one centimeter gutter set here. Um, you can set that to zero and you'll get a little bit of the page back as you'll notice the text jump across there. So putting a gutter in allows for binding. That's something to bear in mind in custom margins. Um, you're probably not going to need two columns set up unless you're writing a journal article. Some journals require that. Um, breaks are useful. So let's look at a way that this can be particularly useful for setting things up. So for example, um, if you look over here, I don't yet have my acknowledgements in. So one of the ways that people would might do that, and I've seen folks um, do so, is if it comes after the abstract section, if I now press return a number of times, that will take me down here, and now I'm on a new page and I can put in my acknowledgements um, 
my keyboard is down here by the way so that's why I keep turning it away so we type in acknowledgements and we've got that done that's not such a great way of doing it as you're perhaps already aware if you then make some changes back here so if I go like that because I've been told that I need to take that out in my abstract all of a sudden the acknowledgements jumps back up there and similarly if we put in any extra lines that will shift the location of that title so if we undo that and just go back to where we were let's just get there right the better way to do that is to actually insert an extra page now you can do that from the insert menu and insert page break or you can do it from within um, the page layout menu insert page works the same uh, whichever route you come in so let's insert a page here and you'll notice that what's happened is the cursor's dropped us down onto a new page we've got the forward that's fine we can type in our acknowledgements here let's just start that off now what happens if we get rid of that section delete it this doesn't jump back up because it's not done that by putting in a load of extra lines so that adjustment no longer becomes necessary i'm just going to go back to where we're again and get rid of that page there we are so now we're back to there so that was by inserting a page break there's another kind of break which is particularly useful when you get to the point where you need to number the pages so let's look at how that works if we go to the end of these opening sections to the first real chapter at this point this is where things need to be numbered from page one so the first page of the first chapter should be numbered page one what comes before that should be numbered often i guess it depends on your local circumstances but often in roman numerals or at least in a different uh, format so the way that we can achieve that if i for example at this point want to insert those page numbers if i go to uh, insert menu sorry um, yeah insert menu page number often at the bottom of the page and you can take one of the defaults or you can do custom setup let's just put a page number in the middle of the foot of the page there we go all these pages are now numbered if we jump to somewhere else we should find there's a different number there um, go back to the beginning that's numbered page one hmm we actually wanted the numbering to start there so i'm going to undo that so the page numbers have now gone um, the better way to do that is by first of all between the two parts where you want differing number systems is to put in not a page break but a section break let's look at how we do that so after the table of figures and uh, figures and before the first chapter if we go to um where we're with page layout breaks insert a next page break but this time it's a section break which works slightly differently that's inserted that um, what we'll do is just bring that page back up so that our chapter starts there you can see that that looks slightly differently if we, uh, there's a useful feature if you go to the home page and go to this little funny symbol that's the show hide hidden characters and you can now see there's a section break in there it's different from a page break it would just say page break when we did that before now that what that means is let's just um, put in a return so that's on a separate line anything that we type on this page can be in, on a page which is in one particular format and anything which comes after it can be on a page which has a different layout or a different format so for example if we let's just close the or hide the hidden characters if we now go back to insert and insert page number we can put the page numbers at the bottom of the page as we did before like that but if we 
just close the header and footer and take a look at. We've now got a page number which we want in Roman numerals. So if we go instead to insert page number and format those page numbers, at the moment that's in the standard format, but what we want is Roman numerals. So if we click there, continue from the previous section, or start at, well let's see what happens. And you can now see that that section started with I, rather the Roman one, and if we go down here, we can see that page one. So now fortunately we've got that set up because we put in the section break, we've got two separate sections. So we've got one which is numbered using Roman numerals and the next section which is numbered using standard numerals. So that's a useful little thing to be able to do within the thesis. Okay. Um, one of the other things that you need to often do is uh, insert a landscape format page rather than a standard portrait format page. Maybe you've got a chart or a figure or just a table, something that needs or would be better displayed using a landscape page. Um, that often comes in the appendices, so let's go there and look at a way we can do that. So we'll jump to there's my references, another bit still to be done by the way. So let's just put in uh, um, a new section again. Remind ourselves how we do that. If we go to page layout, go to breaks and insert a next page section break. On this next page, we're gonna put in our appendices. And we might have a standard appendix in the first one, appendix one. And then on the next page, we need a slightly different layout. So let's insert another page break, a section break. And this is appendix two. But this one is going to require a landscape layout. So if we now go to um, margins and orientation, either we can change to landscape mode and you'll notice that this page is now landscape but because we've started that from a different section the preceding pages stayed in portrait format and now maybe the next page once we've put in that table um, appendix 3 needs to be portrait format again so if we once again insert a section break it maintains the same layout at the moment, but we can obviously change that for Appendix 3. So now we go back to Orientation, Portrait, and it flips back. So you now have this single page within there, which is in its own section, and it has landscape format. It might have different pages within it, so we, if we put in a standard page break, Oops, let's try that again. There we go. So now we've got multiple pages within Appendix 2 for this long extended table or series of figures. But when we drop back to Appendix 3, we can see that we've gone back to the portrait format. So all that's possible using section breaks. And you'll also notice that the page numbering has changed across there. So there we've got... Our appendix, starting with a new set of numbers, page numbers, because we put in a section break at the start. We've got the next appendix with its own set of numbers, the next one with its set of numbers. You may want it to stay continuous throughout, but you can do that. So if you go to the first appendix, appendix there, and you go to um, insert page number, format page numbers, you can either continue from the previous section, so it will pick up page 2 to 8, or you can start it at its own page, and you can do that for each section, either choose to pick up the preceding numbering system, so let's just do that, now scroll to the bottom, and it's worked. 
so you can get your page number